Thank you, Patrick. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. Uh, it's always an honor and also a pleasure to, to be here at the Greenport Conference and also an honor to, to open, to be in this opening session. Um, again, we are in the right step to discuss sustainability, green ports, because Copenhagen Malmö is hosting this conference and this does not make them a green port. It would be easy, we have Andrew and Patrick coming in and you are a green port. No, we have seen with the presentation of Johan that uh, Copenhagen and Malmö are doing a lot to put environment on their agenda and as Johan was saying, it's more than corporate blah blah. I think uh, a boat with, um, for instance, noise, this uh, project about the industrial symbiosis, I think it's so many things they are doing. They are also very active uh, EcoPort members, so I think they, they, we are in the right place. And as Johan was saying, the importance is also measuring, measuring your performance on environment. And we are with uh, ESPO in, our, in this Portopia project, this EU uh, research-funded uh, project, and I, I hope we can rely also on Copenhagen Mammal to, to further work on this project. Before joining the to the, going to the topics of this conference, let me also say some words about Danish ports in general. I think we always say ports in Europe are very diverse. And I think uh, also in Denmark we see that ports are very diverse. And you also see that the autonomy that we so like of our ports that uh, here it delivers. If you see the, this unique cross-border alliance of two ports, uh, Copenhagen Malmö, at the same time we see that there are also in Denmark a lot of small ports. Small ports who have a challenge to organize their port, to organize their services in the most efficient way. And therefore, I, let me make this side remark, I think that the, the port regulation we are discussing now is a good instrument that could be a good instrument to give this opportunity to, to smaller ports to um, organize themselves in a way that uh, suits them best. And what I also want to say is that uh, Denmark is also very active on Ecoport. We have not only um, Copenhagen Malmö, but we have Aalborg, Esberg, Friedrichia Port, Odense and Kalimborg, all uh, active uh, Ecoport members. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, today and tomorrow you will be discussing very interesting topics and let me just give some words about each of them. The first topic or the first debate this morning will be about regional, international, I would even add local. You know, we as ESPO, we always say um, ports can, ships can move but ports cannot move. So we are faced with, with also a global global clients, let's say, global customers, and we think that so also on environmental issues, we should look at IMO. IMO should, should set uh, the standard. But if we look at the sulfur directive, for instance, this is an IMO, it comes from an IMO, but the impact in different regions in Europe is different. It's so, it's a very challenging piece of legislation, but we see now, after uh, nine months of implication, that the impact is uh, reasonable, that certainly a big part of it is because of the lower oil price. But the uncertainty remains, uh, for instance, on scrubbers, open loop scrubbers, the acceptance of it. We know that there are different differences between the member states, and this will remain an issue, unfortunately. Then LNG, uh, I think LNG as well, there we have to see a bit because LNG is a network, you will have to rely on a network, you have to, to not only within Europe, it can only work if you broaden this network of use of installations and if the equipment is there uh, everywhere. Another example in this regional international debate, ballast water, the ballast water convention, a new convention that will come into force, international, but if you look at the, the, the balance, danger and risks and, and the need to, to, to take measures, we think that there might be, if there is no exemption for short sea shipping within Europe, this might, might again uh, um, burden a bit the short sea shipping traffic uh, here, and so we, we have to see how we can do that. Waste reception facilities. Um, the review, okay, there is a review, we are ready just to show you that regional, international, local, it's all, always not so easy, but I think in waste reception facilities, the, the fee system where we allow and where the, the EU framework allows to have 
to take into account local realities, I think this is a good system. As for things, this is a good system to have this kind of subsidiarity. And I'm very happy that the ESSF last week also confirmed that idea that we shouldn't uh, tackle this issue when the directive is reviewed. Another debate is about changing expectations. What is a green port? The changing, there is a changing reality, a changing policy. And it was also already mentioned by Johan, energy, energy targets, new energy targets, not only for the, the shipping lines, but also for the port operators, also for the industries in the port, and for the clients of the port, also for the shippers. So this is a changing reality uh, also as the port we have to adapt to. Volumes will go up. Vessels become bigger, and there are budget constraints. Because everything, if you want to adapt to sustainability, you need also in to do investments. And um, there, I want to make a parenthesis to the to the TNT framework, because in the TNT framework, it's an infrastructure policy that we uh, very much like, because there is a whole uh, story rationally behind of how to to implement, how to help developing the infrastructure to, to realize uh, the objectives of the European transport policy. And it's not always a perfect business case that we can offer there. And so we were very um, disappointed with the shift of money of CEF to the Juncker plan. Because we cannot offer always this perfect business case, certainly if it's to, to comply with environmental legislation. So we there will need to work on the budget also in the review, and I would call on all transport people and also on transport people who have links with their governments to really uh, ask in the review of the uh, financial perspective of the financial framework to ask again to have again money for uh, more money for CF for transport. Another debate uh, today will be about port city relations. You know that ESPO has always been very active on that. We have the code on societal integration. We every, war, every year award a port that is having a very good project in the relations with port and city. We now also have our cruise and ferry network within ESPO, and we also look at there at uh, port and city relations. It remains a very challenging, challenging. And let me also draw in that respect your attention, maybe to more port, the port and its environment, let's say, to a study that the Commission uh, is launching to look at permitting procedures in member states for transport infrastructure projects. I think there are a lot of good practices, but also a lot of obstacles. In some member states, the permitting procedures take too long, are too burdensome, so uh, we are very happy that the Commission will look into that. Port City also seek the ports develop in protected areas, so that brings us to the Natura 2000 legislation. There as well, the Commission is planning a fitness check. We, uh, as ESPO, have participated in uh, the consultation, and our main conclusion is don't touch too much on this framework, because it has been a, ch a challenging thing for ports to, to adapt to that, to learn to live and to learn to apply this le uh, legislation. So if something has to be done, it's maybe to look at a better implementation, a better way of harmonizing the implementation, but we do not see uh, a merit or an added value in now suddenly change again this uh, Natura 2000. Then um, the final debate, I think, this today is on inland logistics, traffic management, multimodal solutions. There again, we come to take hinterland links, make them sustainable, uh, but we also come to better use of infrastructure, do more with less. Uh, the World Economic Forum has said that only 40% of load capacity is used. And so there, this brings us how can we improve that? And then this comes digitalization, being more smart, being more seamless, removing barriers. Uh, we, we all know that the maritime transport without barriers is not yet a fact. So if we could limit the time in the port, that will also lead to less emissions and will also help us in an environmental uh, way. So these are also topics that we will deal with at our annual conference in Dublin on the 2nd and 3rd of June 2016. So to conclude, I wish all of you a good conference, fruitful discussions. I would like to thank the Greenport people for organizing this event and Copenhagen Malmö for hosting it. 
Of uh, course, we are all very individual, all each have their strengths, their needs, and their strategies, but ports are also part of a chain, and uh, transport is a network. And on environmental issues, we really believe that if you're the only one doing your best, it doesn't work. Everyone has to look in the same, the same direction. And therefore, I think these conferences and also Ecoport is a, a good uh, forum to discuss these issues. Thank you very much.